Hey gang, this is Joe T from WBWC and Red Cabin Acoustic. Welcome to the cabin. Today, I want to tell you about the AKG C1000S. Now, I've been working on this video for over a year, not because it's filled with mind-blowing CGI or some other time-consuming production variable, but because I wanted to make sure that the information was as accurate as possible. Its development has included much correspondence with AKG, including phone calls and an email chain filled with mostly unanswerable questions. Knowing that, if you can fill in any of the missing pieces, please educate us in the comments. As an educator, accuracy is important to me, and one of the reasons I began making informational videos to begin with. But no hate, please. There is way too much questionable content out there, and I decided to battle that with accurate information, even if it's not exciting. So let's get to it. The AKG C1000S. C as a prefix signifies condenser, and suffix S signifies switch. Beware, however, that the current prefix suffix letter codes do not apply to some older microphones. For example, the B suffix currently signifies a bass roll-off switch. That's a high-pass filter for you youngsters. Of course, this could change and is not consistent across all models. The AKG C3000 and C3000B both and always have had bass roll-offs. Okay, let's get into the history. Unlike other videos I've made, I'm going to describe the present model first and move back in time to 1986, a great year. So the current model was introduced in 2012. The AKG C1000S Mark IV. More about that name in a minute. This is definitely the best version of this microphone. But it may not matter to you. Easiest to use as features go, but largely unchanged in sonic qualities. All models are small diaphragm condensers. All have on-off switches. All can be powered by onboard batteries or phantom power. The Mark IV is black with a chrome ring near the head basket. This model can be powered by two AA batteries, while all the preceding versions are powered by a single 9-volt battery. The on-off switch on this model is much easier to use, larger and flush mounted, but of course, that means accidental activation or deactivation is more likely. Above the switch is a small LED battery life indicator. In this model, if the battery is good, the LED will illuminate briefly when the mic is turned on and then go out. If the LED remains lit, there is less than 60 minutes of remaining power available. According to the manual of the previous model, the LED remains lit when 45 minutes of power remain. The real difference of this model are the interior switches. A minus 10 dB pad and a gentle high-pass bass roll-off switch at 80 Hz. Your first reaction to these switches might be, that's cool, but being inside is kind of weird. I say that because that was my first reaction. In practice, though, most people I know who like and use this mic set it up for a specific use. Strings, congas, piano, voice, whatever. If you think the interior switches are a bit too inelegant, then you probably feel the same way about the appliances, commonly known as widgets, that have been available for all models. These widgets are the PPC-1000 and the PB-1000. The PPC-1000 is the polar pattern converter, changing the polar pattern from cardioid to hypercardioid. And the PB-1000 is the presence boost converter, which, according to the manual, boosts the sensitivity of the microphone by approximately 5 decibels between 5K and 9K for optimum intelligibility of speech. But of course, could be used to make any source brighter. That dull old guitar, cymbals, harmonica, or a voice, you know. These widgets, as with the interior switches, seem at first blush to be clunky, but as I said, most folks I know find a best use case for this mic 
set it up, and leave it alone. I do understand that if this is your only mic, or you only have a couple or few mics, you may need to access the switches and change out the widgets more often. This may seem tedious, but this flexibility is a great benefit if your mic locker is modest. I wish I had an AKG C1000S, widgets and all, when I started to record. Before moving on, at the time of this taping, yeah, I just said taping, the name Mark IV is not being used on the AKG website and to my knowledge never has been. The designation Mark IV is used by many vendors, however, and is described as the Mark IV on the service and repair documentation. That's how I and my OCD got here. If there is a Mark IV, which model is the Mark III? That's why I called AKG in the first place. Now, the previous model, known as the LED version, can be identified as the silver model with the red stripe near the head basket and the LED battery indicator. The only difference in it and its predecessor was the addition of the battery indicator LED. This LED version became widely available in 2008 until replaced by the Mark IV in 2012. This and preceding models have no internal switches, but the widgets were included. All have tiny recessed on-off switches, which are a pain for my big hands, but I've never switched them on or off by accident. According to a spokesman I talked to from AKG, this is not the Mark III, and there never has been a Mark III. The LED version sits where the Mark III should be. You may think I'm overly pedantic, and I'll own that, but in my defense, the version that precedes the LED is the Mark II. On the service and repair documentation, they, the first three versions, are listed as A, former version, B, Mark II, and C, LED. One more thing to hopefully provide clarity. Before 2008, all production was in Austria. Between 2008 and 2012, AKG outsourced production to help control costs. The C1000S LED was also produced in Poland before all production was moved to China. So there are Austrian, Polish, and Chinese silver LED versions before all production moved to China in 2012 with the introduction of the Mark IV. To my knowledge and experience, all LED versions are identical internally and externally. In 1997, the B version, or Mark II, was released. Silver, red stripe, recessed on-off switch, with polar pattern and presence boost widgets. Often confused with the LED version. This model contains a redesigned circuit board with the XLR mounted directly to the PCB. Remember, I'm working backwards, so all the models after 1997 have this design. Now the first model. In 1986, AKG introduced the world's first condenser stage microphone with a convertible polar pattern and alternate powering options, the AKG C1000S. You can scoff if you want, and I myself am skeptical about marketing claims. But if you're interested in this mic, and if you're still here, you must be, Todd over at Ask DRTK did an incredibly in-depth comparison of the Mark IV and the Shure SM57. Link in the description. Okay, this 1986A version is black with a mint green stripe near the center, recessed on-off switch, widgets, and powered by a 9-volt battery. Disassembly of this A version is a pain, relatively speaking. You need to remove the XLR connection from the bottom of the microphone, desolder it, and then slide out the PCB battery compartment mic assembly. From my experience, all models sound similar, but impossible to tell really with the vast difference in age and abuse across my collection. Also, I can't be certain that the interior circuit design and the color change 
from the A to B Mark II were coincidental. AKG has not always changed the interior of their mics when moving from black to nickel or nickel to black. Remember the small print on the manuals you don't read? Specifications subject to change without notice. If you're new to recording or are looking for some new ideas, download these old mic manuals. Sure and AKG did a great job of explaining how to get the most out of their products. These mics have been sold individually, in pairs, and paired with other mics like the C2000B and the C3000B, and bundled in various drum kits. If you're looking to buy these mics used, don't be afraid to ask questions if the online photos or descriptions don't seem accurate. I recently saw someone trying to sell a C1000S from the 80s as a Mark IV. I tried to correct them politely because I didn't want the potential buyer to be upset and have the seller's reputation tarnished, but that may not be entirely their fault. Recording Hacks, a webpage I really like, describes the MK4 as the 2012 edition, which we believe was the first offered in black, which of course isn't true. Also, I found a webpage called Gem Tracks. They have an article called AKG C1000S Microphone Review. Is it worth it? 2023 updated. It's not updated. It's a cobbled together mess of misinformation because it contains uncurated reviews and articles over the last three decades that have no context and are therefore contradictory at least, confusing, misleading, and wrong. It's pretty terrible. Maybe it's AI created. I try to be kind, and the only time I've ever banned anyone from my channel is when they kept responding to comments with information that was just wrong. So be careful, and if you're interested in buying used mics, do your research, read reviews, watch reviews, and borrow or rent one if you can. Thanks for listening. You know what to do if you like the content. Peace and be safe.